Welcome to Pharmacology Classes by MSR. In this video, I am going to explain about high throughput screening. What is HTS? HTS indicates high throughput screening. So this is an automated process where we can identify the active compounds, antibodies or the genes which will provide us the starting point for designing new drugs to understand the interaction or the role of the biochemicals in the biology. This will help us to identify or analyze new chemicals within a short period of time. It helps us in the drug discovery process to identify the toxicity of the new drugs and also in the environmental analysis. This process of screening was invented by Dr. Gaila Tataskai in the year of 1951. He made the first micro titer plate using the luciate creating 6 rows with 12 wells in it. High throughput screening is referred as lead generation. It is also called as hit to lead. So we are identifying the hit which is leading to the lead molecule. So H2L, hit to lead. So the lead is optimized so that we can go through the preclinical and the clinical trials and get it approved to get it marketed. The procedure involved in this HTS is we will analyze various compounds using the assay plates which are called as mitotiter plates which will have the wells so the ligand or the protein or embryo of interest will be introduced into these wells which is containing a test solution and they are incubated for a certain period of time and we will do the analysis microscopically or by using the analytical technique like spectroscopy so the compounds which are showing the desired effects are called as hits so hit is nothing but a molecule with conformed activity from the primary hts assay with a good profile in the secondary assay with conformed structure whereas lead it is a series of hits exhibiting the sars and demonstrating the activities both in y1 in vitro so once it is showing the activity in y1 in vitro it will be selected from the cluster of hits and certain parameters like binding modification capacity affinity selectivity efficacy freedom of operation patentability drug metabolizing enzyme interaction all these are considered to consider a lead from the cluster of hits so from a large group of the compounds we have to check whether those compounds interacts with our receptors or not so we are going to do the hts so when we are doing this hts those will interact with the ligands proteins or embryos of our interest so whatever are interacting with the our receptor they are being separated in the primary screen then we will repeat the process again and we will check again whether they are interacting with the receptor or not if again they are interacting with the receptor then they are conformed as hits from this hit molecules we will select the lead molecules so the general process from the drug discovery to its marketing involves following steps the first we have to identify what is the disease for example you are going you want the new treatment for diabetes or hypertension first you have to identify the disease then we have to identify the target and validate it what type of drugs can act for the diabetes what can act for the hypertension so we have to identify the target then we have to synthesize those compounds either by combinational synthesis or the individual synthesis of that particular chemical moiety once we synthesize those chemicals or the compounds we have to do the screening by the hts process or any other screening method but here our topic of interest is hts so in this hts process we will identify the hit molecules from that we will going to identify the lead molecules so lead identification and optimization once the lead is identified we are going to conduct the preclinical trials on that particular lead molecule once the preclinical trials are done then we will go for the ind application and fda approval 
if we are getting the FDA approval, then we will go for the clinical trials from phase 1 to phase 3. If phase 1 to phase 3 reports are very good, then we will be going for the new drug approval and the FDA approval. If we get the approval from the NDA, then the drug will be released into the market. Once the drug is released into the market, it is available for treating the identified disease. This is a general process how the drug discovery will start and the how the drug will be marketed. So the life history of a successful drug, as we have seen, the drug discovery involves the initial characterization and it goes to the preclinical trials. In between this identification and going to the preclinical trials, the HTS process is involved. So various compounds are screened by using the HTS to identify the hit molecules and the lead molecules. Then the lead molecules will undergo the preclinical trials by doing the animal model studies, identifying the ADMA properties, the toxicity studies, etc. Then once we get the approval, we will go to the clinical trials. Then we are uh, submitting the marketing and manufacturing authorization application. Once the authorities give us the permission, we are going to do the licensing process and then the product will be released into the market. Once it is released, we will be doing the post-marketing surveillance for that particular drug. Elements of HTS. So there are four major elements which are involved in successful process of the HTS analysis. The first step is chemical or compound library. So the database of samples that are being reacted with the target molecule are identified. So this database is generated in-house or we can purchase in the library. So generally these typical libraries will have a range of proteins or genes. Once we get the compounds or the chemicals, we have to do the assay. The suitable assay method should be followed. This process of assay should be very easy so that we can repeat this process and it should be suitable for automation process. All the reagents and reactions, whatever we are doing should be stable because the screening process may be done without the supervision. And we can use the robotic systems. So the robotic system will carry out the, all the automated process like adding the target compounds to the wells, preparing the plates, adding the reagents. All this will be done by the robotic system. And the last step is data analysis system. So whatever results are generated from this particular essay, they are screened for the positive hits. So as we have seen in the previous slide, there are four major steps in this process of HTS in the drug development. That is preparation of our samples or the compound library collection, then establishing a suitable method for lab automization, then conferring a robotic workstation, and the last one is acquisition and handling of the data. So you will see how many days it takes for this process. For the target identification and validation, it may take months to years. For assay development, it also take months to years. For the verification of assay, for the HTS, it may take one week. For the pilot screen, one to three days. The primary screen may take 100 weeks. And the quality control and data refining may hardly take one to three days. Then we will go for the secondary screening, which may take one to three weeks, depending upon the compounds to be assayed. Then we will prioritize and expand the chemical series within a few weeks. Then we will move on to the lead optimization process. It may take months to years. Once the lead is identified, we move for the preclinical pharmacology from months to years. Then clinical trials followed by approval of the drug and marketing of the drug. It may take years. Once we get the chemicals on the compound library, they are large in number. So to screen this, we are using the HTS process, but there as the compounds are large in number, we are going to use the multi-plate wells. So these plates are called as micro titer plates or SA plates, which contains wells of varying sizes, which starts from 6, 12, 24, 48, 96, 384, 1536 wells or 3456 wells. In this wells, we are going to add the test compounds along with the solvents like DMSO or the protein cells that we are going to analyze. And few wells are kept empty or it may contain the pure solvent so that they can act as the controls. And we do the 
process of assay once the assay procedure is finished to detect or to analyze this particular test compounds we are going to use the detectors like spectrometers fluorescence spectrometers mass spectroscopy nmr ftir or various chromatographics like gas liquid ion exchange chromatography or by using the microscopy techniques like scanning tunneling atomic force microscopy or by the calorie meters Moving on to the techniques and procedures, there are two types of HTS that is functional and non-functional HTS. Functional HTS is it gives us a detailed explanation how our compound is interacting with the target, how our compound is interacting with the target. Whereas non-functional HTS, we will just get a information whether our compound is interacting with the target or not, whether the interaction is happening or not. by the non functional whereas the functional how the interaction is happening that is functional hts robotic functions in hts so one of the great advantage of using robotics in the hts is they can do the repetitive work over a long period of time without any damage whereas a human can't do a lack of assays in a single day continuously for a long period of time so robotics play a major role here and the sample size will be very small when uh, every well we have to give a microliter quantity of the samples so high precision is required and repeatability is required for doing the experiments usually for doing the liquids in the hts the robotic control pipettes are used for the process of hts moving on to the advantages of the hts screening So, if you remember my channel name MSR, that is minimization of assay, sensitivity of the assay, and reproducibility of the assay are the greatest advantages of HDS. MSR, minimization of assay, sensitivity of the assay, and reproducibility. Then the ABC, the high speed of assay, that is automation, low background signal, and a clear message. Automation. background signals are less and a clear message will be given then the substantial reduction in the cell culture work increased screening efficacy standardized to work under the defined conditions long term studies are possible dual and sequential treatments are possible the process is full validated like it can give 3d aggregates for a wide range of tumors and a modular setup can be developed all these are the advantages of hts disadvantages of hts it requires high cost low data quality it requires the pure product and the contamination of the samples is possible the analysis of data and selection of relevant data from the large moles of the data it requires lot of patience professionalism dedication and true expertise applications of hts so the hts is helpful for the drug discovery process to do the systematic study of the mitochondrial toxicity in various environmental chemicals that it helps to study the toxicity of various compounds to analyze the mechanism of action of various drugs and toxins to study the drug drug interactions to study the effect of drugs and various metabolizing enzymes in the cytotoxic assays and genotoxic assays the hts plays a major role so the recent advances in this hts process is we can use live organisms in this process to identify the lead molecule like zebra fish can be used in this process and the ultra hts is available now where we can screen 1 lakh to 3 lakh compounds at a time so the total process of hts we will have a just overview of this first we have to identify the target disease manam a drug select cheskunnam deniki treatment ivadaniki what is the disease you want to treat then what chemicals may act against that particular disease identifying those compounds 
మనం సెలెక్ట్ చేసుకునే డిజీస్కి ఏ కంప్లమ్స్ ఏ డ్రగ్స్ యాక్ట్ చేయగలుగుతాయి అనేది ఒక లిస్ట్ ఒక డేటా బేస్ లాగా లైబ్రరీ నుండి ఏ కెమికల్స్ యాక్ట్ చేయగలుగుతాయి అనే లిస్ట్ తీసుకుంటున్నాం దెన్ వన్స్ వీ గెట్స్ ద కాంపౌండ్స్ వీ ఆర్ డూయింగ్ ద ప్రైమరీ స్క్రీనింగ్ ఆఫ్ దట్ పర్టికులర్ కాంపౌండ్స్ ఆ పర్టికులర్ మనం తీసుకున్న కాంపౌండ్స్లో ఏ డ్రగ్స్ ఆ డిజీస్కి రెస్పాండ్ అవుతున్నాయి అనేవి ప్రైమరీ స్క్రీనింగ్ then from that primary screening we are doing the secondary screening whatever hits we are identifying in the primary screen we are doing them the screening again by the process of secondary screening so manaki primary screening lo ochina hits anitni malli we are screening by the secondary screen oka sari secondary screening lo manaki hits ochayi ante then the hit molecules are identified and from that we are separating the lead molecules then that lead molecule is optimized and it is undergoing the preclinical and clinical studies it is getting the approval from the nda and it gets marketed and used for the treatment of some diseases so this is a general process involved in the hts